So we've looked at how to use fields from the database in our queries and how to sort and search them, but we can also use values of our own and calculations in queries. So let's have a look at how to do that. So I'm going to go to Create and Design Query. So we've looked so far at doing things like adding fields, and we can sort them, and we can look for particular values. So if I wanted to find out all the countries in Europe and display them in alphabetical order, I could do something like this. Now we've got all the countries from Albania onwards and it tells us at the bottom how many there are. But on the field row at the top, so remember the table at the bottom shows us what's going to be in the results of the query. We can add um, numerical constants, so we can have things like uh, 1, 2, 3. We can add text. Notice that text needs to go in speech marks, so I can just say hello. And I can also perform a calculation, so I can do 1 uh, plus 2 for example. And what that'll do is that'll add three columns to my query, the first of which will display the number 123, the second will display the word hello, and the third will display the result of that calculation. So if I run that query now, I get my original two columns, still get 28 rows, but I get this extra data uh, that's in there. I can um, also use a variety of functions that are built into Access if I know how to use those. If I don't, there is another way to find them, which I'll show you in a minute. So there's a function called date, for example, which will show me today's date. So today is the 15th of June. So notice that it gives these columns if I go back and have a look, um, names that begin EXPR, short for expression, and then it just numbers them sequentially. If I don't want it to do that, I can um, change that. So the bit before the colon is just the name of the column. So I can change those to whatever I want. So I can call that today if I want to. We can also use the same technique, actually, with fields from the database. So we can rename this one uh, where for example if I don't want it to say continent so I just need to put a word and a colon before the field name and it will rename the column that can be quite useful if you're doing something like a union query which you can see me do in a separate video because before you merge two lists together into one long list using a union query they need to have the same name so you can use that to rename uh, database fields so we can perform calculations and add information of our own. We can also perform calculations with fields from the database. So if we have a look at population, for example, then we can see that the population is a number, um, but it's in millions. So it looks a bit strange that some places like the Bahamas, it looks like they've got 0.3 people. So if we wanted to show the full number there, what we could do is we could take that population and we could multiply it. So to use a field from the database, you use square brackets, and then I'm going to call that, so population, and I'm going to just multiply that. To perform calculations, we use the same symbols as we would do in Excel. So star for multiply, slash for divide, and then I'm going to multiply that by a million. And so then that should give me the actual um, population. So it's taken my 16.1 and turned it into 16.1 million. So we can do things like that. And we can also do, obviously, division. So if we wanted to work out the population density, for example, we could take the population um, and we could divide that by the area. Now, we can do that by typing the information in. If you don't want to type it in or if you want to access some of the more advanced features, what you can do is you can click the right mouse button and you can go to build and that opens the builder. And you can do this either on the field row or on the criteria row. So you can use calculated criteria as well as calculating the values that you actually display. And we'll have a look at that in a second. So I'm going to go to build. And if you use the builder, you've got access to all of the um, objects in the database. So you can go to tables and look at all the fields in there. So if I wanted to work out the population density, I could do population and there are buttons for the symbols, but you can just type them in as well. So population divided by area will give me my population density. But we've also got access to um, queries, because believe it or not, you can do a query based on another query, which sometimes can be quite useful. Or you can access information from forms. So if you want to use um, 
the information that somebody's entered on a form as your criteria, for example, you can do that. And there's also a variety of functions of different types. Um, so the middle column is the types, and then the right-hand column is um, the actual function. So if I go to date and time, for example, we can see all the date and time functions, and we'll have a look at one of those in a minute. So um, you can do lots of things in the builder, but at the moment I'm just dividing the population by the area. And again, I can uh, give that a name. So I'm just going to call that uh, density. And when I run my query, we can see, well, what we can see is a load of hashes um, because that means that the number is too big to be displayed in the, the column as it is. So if we made the column wider, we can see that number. So that's just the same as Excel. If a number's too big to fit in the cell, then what you see is hashes or sharp symbols. The other thing to notice is sometimes for very big or very large numbers, they're shown in standard form or sometimes known as uh, scientific notation. So what this means is this, this top answer there, that would be uh, 2.46, etc., uh, times 10 to the power minus 5. So the part after the E is the exponent. The bit before the E is the mantissa. So um, you can read those um, quite easily. So this one is 8 times 10 to the power minus 4, for example. OK, so we can do um, calculations um, like that. We'll have a quick look at another example now because these functions that are built into Access are particularly useful for dates. So I've got another database now which is a database of cars including a column of when their MOT test is due. Now the MOT certificate expires on a particular day but what about if as the owner of a garage we want to notify all of our customers um, that their MOT is expiring next month. So we've already looked at the date function. The date function gives us today's date. Um, what about if we want to find out whose MOT is due next month? So I can go to um, create and I can create a table. So I want a list of the cars. So the unique thing about the car is the registration number. Uh, so obviously if I was going to send uh, letters to these people I'd need more information including the name and address but um, I'm just going to identify the cars to begin with. So if I run this query now, what we'll see is a list of all the cars um, and the exact date of their MOT um, expiry. So what we might want to do is actually um, find out what month that is. So if we find out what month that is, then there's a month function, which I used there. Um, which will return a number representing the month. So 1 will be January, 2 will be February, etc. There are other functions which return the, the day and the year. They can also be quite useful. So what we want to do is we want to compare that month with whatever next month is. So to work out when next month is, we could work out the month uh, today, so the month of the current date, and then add 1 to it. So it's currently... Jan uh, it's currently June, so that would be month 6. If we add 1 on, that will give us 7. So we're looking for um, records where the month of the MOT is 7. And we can see that there's three cars um, whose MOTs expire next month. So that's not particularly useful, that's 7. So what we could do is, even though we've performed a calculation with the MOT date, we can include just the date as well, and then not show the calculation. So then when we run our query what we see is a list of the cars and the exact date that their MOT expires. And if we save that, so I'm going to call that um, query MOT, so using the Lezinski Reddick naming convention, so MOT, um, and what that will do is that will save the instructions for finding those cars. So it always finds the ones where the MOT is due next month so if I run this in a month's time, it will show me all the cars whose MOTs are due in August. And because I've saved it in a query, not only will it do that with me just clicking the query rather than having to start again every month, if we do a mail merge, and um, when you do a mail merge with an Access database, you get a choice of whether you use tables or whether you use queries. So if I was to include address information in there, we could use that query as the basis of a mail merge to send those customers letters to let them know that their MOT was due.